one. Today is May 16th, 2020, and I'm attorney Mark Nicholson for the Nicholson Nugget, the official newsletter of the law office of Mark Nicholson. And today I'm here with, go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Um, James Penn. Okay. And um, you're James Penn from where? Um, James Penn, I live here in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, born and raised here, been here my entire life. Um, I actually own and operate J.P. Bell Bondi. Um, I um, created the business uh, in 2006. I've been in since 2006. Um, uh, statistically, out of the 220-something Bell agents in the state of Indiana, I'm actually one of 19 who's a general agent. Um, the general agents are basically over every other agent. Um, and I'm the youngest general agent. Um, been doing it since 2006. Oh, wow. And you're based here in Indianapolis, is that correct? Yes, uh, primarily based here in uh, Indianapolis, Marion County. Um, uh, but I am registered in all the surrounding counties. Um, I can do a bond anywhere in the United States that has surety bonds. Uh, what I sell is insurance. I'm, I'm licensed through the Indiana Department of Insurance. So uh, as an insurance agent, um, uh, the company, uh, American Surety, who I write my bonds under, um, they're the biggest in the nation. So uh, I have the ability to write bonds anywhere in the United States, as long as we have an agent in that area. Um, so it's literally like a phone call to get someone out if they're out of state once proper paperwork and protocol has been followed. Okay, so uh, can you kind of walk us through the bond process? Like how does it work for someone to, who gets arrested and then how do they post bond if they're in jail? How do they get in contact with you? How does that process work? Okay, uh, so basically what someone has to purchase through me is like an insurance agreement, um, but really more like a promissory note. You're promising this person's gonna show up to court. I'm promising, of course, the same thing, but in the value of the bond that they're asking for. Let's say, for example, the bond is a $10,000 bond. Um, the cost of the bond is already preset um, at 10% of the amount of the bill. So that 10% would be $1,000 plus a, a filing fee of five dollars. Uh, I'm actually one of the few bondsmen who have taken the legal steps to get my rate legally reduced to eight percent. Um, that way I can be a little bit more competitive and uh, I know times are a little tough um, so that way it saves them a couple of dollars as well. Um, but that money's like it's non-refundable. It's a cost for me to put up the full amount of the bond um, um, for, that, for, for that person and as long as that promise is never broken, meaning they make every single court date, then that eight percent they pay is all they ever have to pay. And if any reason the promise is broken, meaning that that uh, defendant decides not to go to court, then um, the, uh, the, the signer is liable and responsible for the full amount of the bill. And my example, it would be the full $10,000 plus interest, attorney fees and recovery fees, if worse came to worse with the situation. But again, you know, uh, as long as that person makes all those court dates, um, then, um, you know, everything is everything. Good. Uh, so then uh, since you walked us through the process, how did you actually get into uh, this business of uh, Bell Bondsman? That's a great question. Uh, I actually have like three different answers for that question depending on who's asking me. All right, right. let's go through all three of them. Nah, 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 because a lot of times, you know, when, when someone is sitting um, at my desk and they're looking at me, they're just like, how did you get in this position? And it just depends on how much information I really want to give at that moment. Uh, there's a, a short one, a long one, and then there's one that just kills the conversation. Mm -hmm. But uh, long, long story short, um, uh, you know, in the past, whenever someone ever got arrested um, that I cared for, um, you know, I always would put money on the bond and, you know, kind of leave it at that. Um, and then uh, one time my, my nephew actually had got arrested and it was a more, it was more personable that my nephew had got arrested. And I actually stepped foot in the bail bond office for the first time. And I remember asking the guys, I mean, how does this work? And, uh, you know, we, 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 a guy named was Daryl Abels. He owned Advantage Bell Bonds. This was like in 2005. Um, and uh, we, uh, um, we got acquainted really well. And he gave me the opportunity to become a Bell agent. Um, and I just ran with it from there. Wow. Yeah. And uh, so, you had like, it sounded like you had a mentor that started you off in the, in the bail bondsman business. 
Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I hate, hate to pull a race car uh, uh, slightly, right? But you know, this this was a white gentleman, yeah. and um, you know, he he wasn't seeing any black dollars. Yeah, right. He was seeing more white dollars than black dollars, even though in Marion County, majority of the uh, arrests are African Americans. And he didn't have any relationships with any minorities. Mm -hmm. And for me to be the type of person I am, you know, I'm real open and inviting. And, and I could be real loving, um, you know, once a friendship can be built uh, with good people. And once that friendship was built, you know, on, on the level of just dollars, he, he could see that I could bring in something that he was unable to. Um, and by me being the face uh, uh, that I have and, and, and the people that I knew, I was able to generate income that, Blue was mine wow. and mine as well. Um, but luckily he never locked me into a contract or anything like that. Um, so I was able to branch out on my own after about a year. Um, and uh, and I just flourished from there. No uh, so, uh, so how did the uh, bonds uh, industry start? Uh, I see how you started, but even before you started, how did this whole industry uh, uh, start? If you Oh, okay. Um, it goes back, by the way, back to the slave era, mm. um, back when um, slave owners um, uh, possessed the property of slaves. Um, those slaves that were run, they would put bounties on those slaves. And so that created the bounty hunter who would chase down these slaves uh, for the reward. Wow. Um, and that system um, was so efficient that the courts uh, adopted the system because when people would get arrested, they would have issues with people returning back to court. Um, that's why they would just hold them throughout the whole process of the court hearing. I mean, we're talking a couple hundred years ago, yeah. but um, you know, when they implemented the uh, um, the bounty into the court system, then bail was actually created, and then um, uh, that's actually the history of where we are today. Wow, uh, with bail. Yes. Yeah, started. I know that there's a movement uh, to kind of uh, do away with a lot of this bail and, and just, you know, put people on these pretrial release programs and, and kind of, you know, phase out the issue of the bail bonds. And I talked to one county yesterday um, and they were like, we don't even use bail bonds. Because everything is a cash bond. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'm, I'm assuming that would be something that would would, would hurt the bail bondsman when, you know, counties have set up a structure like that. Okay. So smaller counties, they feel like they can police their own communities. Mm -hmm. So therefore uh, it's okay to do a cash bond with that County because odds are that person is born and raised right there. And if there's an issue, the police force can actually uh, 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 apprehend that person uh, more than likely. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when uh, we're talking Marion County, you know, a, a, a bigger County, you know, with, you know, hundreds of thousands of people who live here, um, a police force of less than probably 2,500 people. Um, it's, 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 uh, it's impossible. Um, uh, currently right now, there's over 30,000 open warrants in Marion County. Wow. 30,000. So, so the news will tell you it's roughly around 17,000. All right. But that the number that they release is an old number. The clerk's office won't really give us a new number, but I know what it really is. Um, you know, so, and we all know what it really is, but what they put out there is about 17, but for the sake of argument, even 17 is a ridiculous amount of open warrants to have. Um, and those are actually all cash fines, majority traffic court. Um, it's not us that's looking for them. It's because, uh, Marion County has chosen to implement the cash bond system, which from my perspective doesn't work because people aren't taking going to court seriously now. Worst case scenario, they forfeit the money. They was forfeiting the money anyways, you know, dealing with the bondsman. So now it's like, okay, catch me when you can, you know, unless it's a high profile situation and they have to put, you know, real effort behind chasing someone. Um, other than that, if it falls in my hands, then that failure to appear is my top priority, you know? Um, and uh, I say my success rate of turnarounds is probably close to about 95% is my turnaround success rate recoveries. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I'm more networked within the community um, I can achieve things that uh, IUMPD and the sheriff's office can't um, through, you know, just networking um, through systems a little unorthodox to them, 
but uh, it's been um, uh, well placed for me. So <clears throat> there's a, like when I mentioned earlier about the, you know, this move to get rid of uh, some of the bondsmen in a sense, or uh, there is the bail project. Uh, I know it's not, I don't believe it's in all counties, but it's in trying to expand. Um, uh, can you kind of explain a little bit what is the Bell Project and your views about this, the Bell Project? Um, I like the Bell Project, actually. Uh, it might sound weird as a bondsman because uh, the Bell Project is designed for to help with cash bonds, but a little bit about it, a uh, little bit of history about it, actually. Um, so there's this little known rapper who's married to this really famous singer. Her name is Beyonce. Mm -hmm. His name is Jay-Z. Um, Jay-Z created this not-for-profit organization in Brooklyn, um, maybe about five years ago or so, um, designed to pay cash bonds for defendants who just couldn't afford it. There was guys who were stuck in New York on bonds that were a hundred dollars, a few hundred dollars, and they're stuck in there for weeks and months. You know, they just couldn't afford to get out. The families couldn't do it, or a thousand dollars, just couldn't afford it. Um, so with the Bell Project, they basically paid the cash bond for you. Um, as long as you don't have a, a, a history of felon to appear and things like that. And you just give your word that you'll show up to court and they'll pay it. And then uh, when the case is over, the money's refunded back to the Bell Project and they pay it forward for the next person. Um, it's actually made it here to Indiana. It is in Marion County. I have worked with the Bell Project because some bonds are what's called split bonds. A portion is paid to me, a portion is a cash bond. So I got to work with the Bell Project um, on posting these type of split bonds. And I've had a chance to talk to these guys and I like what they're doing. I think it's great. Um, you know, it, of course it, it takes away from the bondsman and it leaves me still 100% liable, um, you know, for the bond when worst case scenario, the bell project is just losing their money. So it's kind of a double edged sword, but from the perspective of the public, I think that um, it's a great program for those who, uh, who may not be able to afford bail um, and who are good people just who just got caught up in situations. Um, and, and so that's in, in, in a nutshell, that's kind of the Bell Project is. And how do you see the future of uh, bonds in, in Indiana? It's been on a downhill spiral um, since they started doing cash bonds, which was roughly maybe around 2012, give or take. They start coming in really heavy. Um, I predict maybe another two years in Marion County before surety bonds completely disappear. Maybe whenever they finish this new uh, city county building that they're building, um, you know, I think that may be the end all for surety for Marion County. Um, they're only giving us um, the worst of the worst. Uh, when it comes to uh, bonds now, uh, major felony situations, out-of-towners, um, Hispanics, um, um, uh, high-risk situations, people with multiple failure to appears, you know, um, they give us the worst of the worst. Um, and and, and, uh, um, and uh, I think that uh, it's, it's more designed to set us up to fail. Mm -hmm. um, Cause, because the, the way it works from the perspective of the bondsman, if it's a $10,000 bond, for my example earlier, if this person fails to appear and I can't recover this person in time, um, then I have to pay the county the full amount of the bill, which in this case would be the full $10,000. Uh, so that's my motivation to recover someone, to not have to pay that $10,000. But when they're giving us the worst of the worst, then you know uh, it, the, the odds are stacked against us um, so, you know, we really have to get out here and really get these guys because if not, you know, uh, a couple bad bonds uh, could really just end um, the business altogether. And it's been a couple of guys who actually uh, in the past years who have been in business for 30, 40, 50 years in Marion County who are no longer in business. Mm -hmm. um, these guys are gone. Uh, Turner Bell Bonds. Um, these guys are gone. Um, they were a, a strong threshold uh, for the bail bond community for decades. Um, they fell into a similar situation. A bunch of forfeitures had uh, stacked up on them and they just couldn't afford to pay them. And, and when you get to that point, you kind of, uh, your license get revoked and, and you're done for it. Right. Um, when you uh, mentioned uh, the worst of the worst, you mentioned uh, Latinos in, in that group. Uh, 
were you kind of referring to the, the county may feel like people that um, are of Latino uh, descent are more likely to flee back to Mexico. So that's why they're like, okay, well, we don't really uh, want to put them in the cash bond. You're going to have to go to a bail bondsman that makes their, cat, their bond higher. Uh, that's that's a that's a touchy uh, that's a touchy question, uh, uh, but I I'm a I'm a pretty good straight shooter, so I'll just tell it how it is. Um, there's just a there's a fear amongst dealing with uh, the Hispanic community. Um, uh, the fear from the bail bonds perspective, um, it's difficult to network in a community that you're not already a part of. Okay. So when you have to recover someone, um, it just becomes more difficult when there's a language barrier. It's more difficult when um, you, you just can't do what, you've, what you can do in the black community for myself, within mm -hmm. my community, I can, I can network to uh, uh, try to recover someone. It becomes more difficult. Um, uh, it's kind of uh, every bail bondsman has a horror story related to dealing with a Hispanic bond. Um, someone can be Jesus today and Jose tomorrow and still be right here and be difficult to find. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so, um, it, so that, that kind of, are there are there any uh, Latino uh, bail bondsmen in um, Indianapolis? Not one. Oh, okay. Now I kind of understand the difficulty that uh, you're referring to, if um, there's not anyone that can, you know, really bi like bilingual, no Latino. Um, uh, so in a, in a way, it almost sounds like uh, with the, if someone is of a Latino descent, um, not only is the chance that, you know, their bond may be higher, it may, it may be even harder to, to find a bonds person uh, uh, that would even, you know, post their bond. Yeah, it, it becomes difficult. I've actually become more of the every other bondsman tells his banks to call me, right? Mm -hmm. Call JP. That's what they tell them. Okay. Um, and, Cause like they don't want to deal with it. Like they don't want to straight up tell them why. They're just like you know they give them excuses or whatever, and they end up on my phone line. And um, I, I do have an interpreter that that I have uh, hired, um, and I do entertain doing Hispanic bonds. I do entertain them. I just take them uh, more strategically. Um, a, a lot of times these situations, uh, a lot of Hispanics, they, um, they have uh, immigration holds on them because they're not even supposed to be here in the first place. Oh, wow. Right? So they'll catch a case and then they'll have the bond on the, the case here, but then they'll also have an immigration case. Um, and uh, uh, the fear is, you know, once they post bond on the case here, and the immigration comes and get them, you know, it's, it's unpredictable to know what beholds that person's future. Because um, immigration, um, you know, uh, you don't know if they're going to allow them to stay in the country. You don't know if they're going to deport them back to the home country. Then it kind of leaves you in limbo with a bond that you wrote uh, with the court system uh, on a case that never got to any type of closure. Yeah. You see? So it, it's not like it's a race thing, really. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit deeper. Um, because now we're talking, you know, money, um, you know, do I want to have a, do I want to write a $10,000 bond with a guy that has an ice hole that might get deported back to Mexico, you know, and then I got to deal with fighting with the courts to try to get myself off the bond or, uh, you know, just to see what happens and immigration takes their sweet time and they're difficult to deal with as well. So you got to just kind of sit back and wait to see what happens. So it becomes a gamble. Yeah. Um, I could imagine with the current administration, uh, um, that the deportation for almost any offense is, you know, almost near automatic. And if they have a major felony, uh, I'm sure that I, because as a criminal defense attorney, uh, I remember in the beginning years of the Obama administration, everybody that had a Latino, Hispanic sounding name, they were putting a $10,000 ice hold on them. And uh, then after a while, it kind of, you know, they started the jail, started getting overcrowded and they're like, okay, let's stop doing it. And then, you know, now with the Trump administration, they're basically re repeating it. Uh, yes. with, you, know, you know, hey, if you sound a Latino, you know, and you got a, a fence, we're coming after you. And, and, and then, um, it, like I said, they're taking to Chicago, wherever, and, and, you know, you never see them again. Um, there, you know, let me say this. There, there are tons of good um, uh, Latinos that are out here. Not, they're all not like criminals, like, you know, Trump likes to put them out there. You know, just when I get the phone calls, 
I just, you know, I, I, I like to get a good feel of who they are, mm -hmm. how long they've been here, um, how grounded they really are. You know, um, a lot of times, you know, these, these they're good people, people who have been employed for a long time, you know, maybe under the radar the whole time, but still employed, same location, same home, um, you know, pretty much grounded kids the whole nine. You know, it's, there's unorthodox questions that I usually ask dealing with um, Latino bonds, more of just getting a feel of how grounded they really are. And if they truly are grounded here in uh, Marion County, uh, you know, uh, then, then I'm more than likely to um, uh, provide the services they need. Yeah. All right, is there anything else you'd like to say before we um, uh, end our interview? Uh, let me see. Uh, I would like to uh, um, commend you. Uh, I believe that what you're doing is a beautiful thing here. Um, it's, this is a great tool uh, to, uh, uh, to be able to reach out to people. Um, uh, the the bell bond industry is something that no one really thinks about or cares about until they actually have to um, deal with it and it becomes a crash course, yeah. you know? Uh, so uh, I, I like to, I like what you're doing here. It's a beautiful thing. Um, I know your story, so uh, <laughs> it's, it's good to, uh, I commend your elevation. Thank you, uh, thank you. you know, um, but um, uh, the, this, this Zoom technology, you know, this is the future. My son is doing this or, 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 or uh, school right now, you know. So uh, I know the courts are doing the same thing, um, uh, doing this. And uh, this may become our, a whole new normal for us. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm even doing bonds from home because the uh, clerk's office is closed and um, everything is done remotely online. So I'm just basically the bonds I am getting right now, more domestic violence, domestic violence bonds because people are cooped up in the house with the loved ones, right? So everything's over the phone, um, you know, and I can email the clerk's office and, you know, it's a done deal. Um, I, I, I like this. Um, I feel like it takes away from um, the seriousness of it when we can sit face to face. It kind of, it takes away from that. Um, but, but nonetheless, uh, I, like, I like what's going on. Uh, you know, you got to adapt and adjust. You don't want to fall behind on times these days. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I, I really appreciate you spending your time today, uh, this morning, uh, or taking, I guess, this afternoon with us. And, you know, you know, I uh, respect everything that you're doing. And I appreciate you know, the words of advice that you have uh, given me over the course of my uh, career. So I always, um, you know, like what you do and refer people to J.P. Bell Bondsman. Uh, and, uh, and I met your mom at the uh, opening of the um, African-American uh, uh, library here in, at the Marion County Public Library. Mm -hmm. And uh, she told me all about you and said I needed to meet you. And I'm so glad that I have, and I appreciate our friendship. No doubt, me as well, me as well. Yeah, take care and enjoy the rest of the day. You too, Mark. Bye-bye.